Hi, my name is Todd Lamley and welcome to your three minute update on two great features found in the new Cisco Firepower 7.1 code. This three minute update will cover Snort 3 actions and Snort 3 recommended rules. Let's take a look at Snort 2 and then compare that to our Snort 3 actions and recommended rules. Now when I'm looking at Snort 2, you can tell it's Snort 2 because we have over in the left hand side, we have these layers. We don't have layers in Snort 3. That goes away in Snort 3. The one thing I wanted to show you is the different base policies. You have connectivity over security, balanced connectivity and security, security over connectivity and max detection. In Snort 2, the rules that are determined into each of those base policies are right here listed under rule overhead. So over here, we have low overhead. These are the rules you'll find in connectivity over security. The medium overhead rules are going to be in balance, but hold on, hold on, it's low plus medium overhead are in the balance. Low plus medium plus high equals security over connectivity. Now we have very high overhead rules. Now these aren't determined to be basically in, enabled by default in any of the base policies. However, with max detection, we're gonna have all rules on over SID 10,000, Snort ID 10,000. So very high overhead rules aren't enabled in any base policy except in max detection by default. And not all of them are enabled in max detection, only the SIDs above 10,000. Now, if I'm going to look at a rule here, and this is Snort 2, What's in each space layer, again, is based on how, what they determine as rule overhead. Now, it's not just rule overhead that determines that, that's just how they separate them here. They also use other factors to determine what's going to be in each space policy. And then they put them in based on the rule overhead. But how, let me give you an example. If I type in log4j, and I'm looking at they have 42 rules now. Notice they were all enabled and drop and generate events by default. Why? It doesn't matter what your base policy is because they are all listed as low overhead rules. This is one of the things they did. Log4j, no matter what base policy you had, these were going to be enabled, right? And so by changing them all, if you look at all of them, they're all low overhead. If they had set these to high overhead and you had balanced, these would have never been enabled by default and that could have caused some issues. So this is an example of how they use rule overhead in Snort 2. Now scrolling down and looking at this rule even further, I can come down here and here's the actual rule. Notice it has an alert, it's an alert rule. There's only two actions for Snort 2, alert and pass. And we can see this, that's most rules are gonna be alert. All of them by default are alert. You'd have to change something to pass if you wanted it different. If I come over here to objects, and intrusion rules, I can go in a rule and edit it. And the minute I change something inside the rule and save it, it's going to rename the SID to over a million. You cannot change a Cisco Telos rule, right? You can take that rule and edit it, but it will change the SID starting at one million. Now I can see the actions here are alert and pass. Now passes are useful. Some people may say never use them, but I could say, hey, if it's coming from a source IP of R&D, which gives false positives, we're gonna pass that. However, if you create a pass rule and someone comes in and it, and it hits this, it's never gonna be seen by another snort rule. As packets come through the snort process, they're going to be seen by multiple snort rules or match multiple snort rules. What pass says, it's kind of like a trust rule in your ACP, where if it hits that rule and it's a trust, doesn't seem to be seen by any other rules, doesn't go any ACP, no inspection, goes right to egress. And that's almost exactly what this pass does for IPS and a packet coming in that hits a pass rule. So alert and pass. So let's go ahead now and take a look at Snort 3 and how it compares to the two things I just showed you. So here you are in Snort 3, and notice now we have rule groups, rule groups instead of overhead to determine what is in each base policy. So this is different. It's a better way to look at this because if we looked at overhead, it was kind of like, well, this is low overhead. There's not much overhead in this rule. So we're going to put it in connectivity over security. And the fact is that that didn't really give us an idea of why it was in any of those base policies. So this one's a little bit better. If I was to come look at this and I could say, okay, I'm looking at this rule. Now let's take a look at the rule actions. This is where it is different. 
If I come over here and I could do it by rule action up here or on the rule itself there, notice we have a block. And this is the same as what we had in Snort 2. Then we had an alert. So these two are really the same. Basically, these are the only ones you should use out of this. So let me go through and take a look and talk into more detail about these rule actions in Snort 3 and see why you don't really want to use all of these. So the rule actions, there's the first few are the same. We have block and alert. So this is just generate events, the same as Snort 2. And this is drop and generate events. Now this is gonna stop the whole data stream, this block is. So what they did is they came up with a new one called drop here. I'm not sure that you should use this. It says we're only gonna drop the packet, the event and packing packet, but not the data, the whole data stream. So I wouldn't recommend using the drop. If you're gonna use something, just use block just like we did in Snort 2. So I'm not real sure that this is an improvement here. However, we could use a reject, which is a little bit better than the block in the sense it does, sends a TCP reset. So for TCP traffic and then ICMP unreachable for UDP traffic. So reject is usable. But on this screen, this is pretty much the only other one that I would use other than the block and alert. Rewrite and pass could be used, but these are more advanced. I don't recommend ever using these. So this does not create a necessarily a pass rule. We're changing a Talos rule to have an action of pass. And that's not the same as what I just showed you. If you wanted to create a pass rule, go create the Snort 3 rule, just as I showed you in Snort 2. You can go to the same place, create the Snort 3 rule, and there's a couple other steps to take, but effectively that's how you would do it. Do not go and change a Talos rule, and that's what they're saying here. Go ahead and set it as a pass rule, change it. The other one is rewrite and change content. And I don't understand why you would replace content in there. You would only do it, we've done it for fun in classes, but I don't recommend this. I don't recommend this. So although they look good and they have nice little icons and everything, it's kind of fun. The only one that I would use in here is the block, alert, and the only one I would reject. And of course you could disable it, right? That's the only other thing. So although they have these really great new supported actions, we're gonna stick with what we know. The other ones are just gonna cause you some problems. Now, moving on to Firepower recommended rules. In the Snort 2 rules, again, we're using the rule overhead and you know, low plus medium plus high equals security or connectivity and so on, as we already discussed. We could do the same thing if we come up here and go to recommended rules with Snort 2, and you've probably already seen this. The slider bar that says, hey, we're only gonna turn on medium overhead rules or something for balance. So even if you had security or connectivity, if you didn't come in and change this, slider bar, then you would never turn on high overhead rules even if you had a base policy or security or connectivity, so you could change it to this. So this is kind of old school. You could set it to none. What's the point of even doing this? Now we can accept recommendations to disable rules and you should turn that on. Why? Because this is the whole point. We're going to turn on and turn off rules based on traffic it sees. Operating system, browser versions, and applications, and so on. It's going to see all this. If you don't have XP, for example, it will never turn on any rules, or it would turn off all rules for XP. A broad but kind of useful example. In Snort 3, if we look at this, we're going to see that we have connectivity or what we would consider low, but now we have security levels. And connectivity or security is the security level is the first one balance, security over connectivity, and max detection, so this is new. This might be useful to us. Not a big fan of recommended rules. I think you should tune this by yourself. So coming back into Snort 3, we have our rule groups, and we have our base policy up here that's set when you create the policy, and at the policy level, you can go and change this. But the mode over here, irrelevant to what we're talking about, but this is drop well in line and don't drop well in line, and you can change that here. Now I could come under, under here into rule groups and change a group. This is much different than what we had in Snort 2. I can come in here to this group and change the security level for just this group instead of having to change the whole base policy. I can edit it and change this back. This is extremely helpful. Now, if I wanted to come in here and do recommendations, as I was telling you, I can have my security levels here and I can say, well, I want to go ahead and turn on all rules from all groups based on the recommendations, turn off rules that are disabled rules of traffic I'm not using, data I'm not using. Now, what is good about this down here is that it won't disable rules for or override rules that I automatically enabled. So this is good. Now, why is this useful here? Why could this possibly be more useful than in Snort 2? By turning on max detection here, all rules from all groups, 
have the availability with firepower rule recommendations. This might allow me to change my base policy to max detection, which has been almost impossible in production. You're going to have on, you know, 40, 30,000 rules, 35,000 rules, 40,000 rules, depending on your system. And you're going to have all these rules on. It does turn off the threshold. So it's going to wait to go through all of those. You'll end up actually having less security at that point. Well, however, with firepower rule recommendations, it may go in there and turn on a for rough rules for you based on your traffic where this could be more useful for you. You do need to test this. I should have you send a notarized document. Tell me you're going to test this and not blame me for this when you go and do this. But it would be fun to go and test this. Now, if you do go and do this and you take this up to max detection, that's fine and disable these rules here. Make sure you have the mode here as detection for a couple weeks watching what's happening and testing your network. So this is a pretty good update, but you do need to test this. My name is Todd Lanley and this is your three minute update.